right? Hi, my name is Dr. Jordan Glenn, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Biodex isokinetic dynamometer in the Applied Physiology Lab at Louisiana Tech University. So the first thing we have to do before we do anything else is if we come in and everything's been done right, all the equipment should be turned off. So the first thing we need to do is turn it on. Now I know you can't see from where you are, but if you look right down here, there'll be a switch just behind the dynamometer that says main power. All we're going to do is flip it up, you're going to hear a beep, and you're going to hear the system start to engage. There's only one big switch behind the equipment, you can't miss it, uh, it's pretty easy to find, just in that bottom right hand side down there. After, after we turn the computer on, we'll see power up uh, here on the screen. At this point, we can turn our computer on, and everything is slowly starting to load up. Now the nice thing about the Biodex is unlike a lot of the equipment we have here in our lab, it warms up very quickly, actually 30 seconds to a minute, so we don't have to worry about coming in early and turning everything on. We can turn it on usually when our subject gets here. Uh, so we make sure that everything gets turned on, we move forward. The other thing to keep in mind with this equipment is there's a password on the computer. It's right here on this packing list where we keep our manual for the computer. APL in capital letters, MG in lowercase letters, and then 224. Corresponds with Applied Physiology Lab, Memorial Gym, and then Room 224. This will always be in here with the computer. We just make sure that's right there. And what we'll do is we'll move forward. We put in our password, APL, MG, 224. This will get our computer ready to go. The first thing we're always going to see is this right here. It's going to say the dynamometer has not performed its initial power up calibration. Please press the start button on the dynamometer. That's going to be this blinking start button right here. We hit that button, and after that, we start to see this knob turn on the dynamometer. This means that the piece of the equipment is actually calibrating, it's initializing. Uh, once this is done turning, we can move forward. There it goes. It only takes a few seconds. Once it's done turning, we come back to our computer. We can hit OK to continue, and then we'll see retry connection to the dynamometer. We want to do that as well. As long as we've done these steps properly, it will automatically bring up the software. Once the software is turned on, we're going to follow it just down the left-hand side. Uh, it's kind of gives us like almost like a checklist. So that's how you can kind of know if you're on the right track as long as you're following down the line. So we'll here we'll, we'll increase the size a little bit. We click here our first tab, which is patient. It's going to bring up in the information. So we're going to be testing Bo Haynes today. We put his information in. The, what's very important that you make sure you get in the computer is going to be the first and last name, so Bo Haynes, his gender, which is he's a male. We're going to be doing his right leg. That's his dominant leg. Involved would be if you were testing somebody coming off of an injury. Involved leg means which one is the injured leg. In this scenario, he's not hurt. We're going to click none. We put his weight in, and then you see for his ID, we're just using the first part of his Louisiana Tech ID, or his first part of his, his Louisiana Tech email. Everyone's is unique, that's usually a really good way to do the ID. After you have all this information in, uh, so if you're gonna do a new patient, you would hit add patient and put that in. Hit save, since he's already in there, we don't have to do that, and we're just gonna click our second tab, which is protocol. The protocol you're gonna use is gonna be very dependent on the situation, the test, and so you should be asking either the professor or your advisor who is going or which protocol you're going to be using. For this certain study, uh, I have one set up, so we're going to click protocol. You'll see a number of different options come up. We're going to be using the isokinetic unilateral. What this means is it's an isokinetic test, and unilateral meaning we're only going to do one side of the body. So we're going to open that up. And then you can see all of the options you have again, the ankle, the elbow, the hip, the knee, the shoulders. We're gonna use the knee for this particular assessment. We click on that. And then you'll see here, we have it named protocol test for teaching video. We select that. And then we hit close after we've selected our protocol. Again, you can change and set up protocol specific to your needs. Uh, again, this will, this will come down to individual studies and what your advisor and or professor is looking for. At this point, it brings up our operation screen. So we can be done with the computer for a few minutes at this point. We need to focus on the setup of the rest of the equipment. So what we, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have this set up for our subject. 
If I'm sitting here, you can see that if I was going to be aligned, it would set up to my left leg. Being that we're testing Bo's right leg, we need to do some adjusting. Right here, we have a knob that we can turn, we can turn this. And by turning this, it allows us to turn the whole unit. So we want to turn our whole unit around so that way it's at 90 degrees in the opposite direction from which it was. And there's numbers on here that correspond. You just need to find the 90, line it up, make sure it's locked in. So now if I try to turn it, it's locked in. From here, there's little steps on either side. By stepping on these steps, we can now slide this pretty easily. And if you're having a hard time sliding it, it's probably because you're not stepping hard enough on the step. We want to make sure it's there, get it locked in. That looks good. So now you can see if I was going to sit here, I'd be more aligned for my right side. So this is step one, making sure that we have this aligned properly. Step two is to make sure we get the seat set up for our subject. So Bo, I'm going to have you take a seat right here on the chair. And I'm going to go ahead before I do anything and pull him forward a little bit. So that way I have the ability to go around the entire chair because there's things we're going to need to adjust. What I'm looking for is I want you to pull your hips all the way back in that chair for me. And I want you to just sit flat. What I'm looking for is about two fingers worth of separation between the back of his leg and the chair. When he's doing the test, he needs to be able to have full extension and flexion. And if the chair is too tight, he's not going to be able to move his leg back far enough. So he looks a little bit snug there. I'll probably pull him forward just a bit. And the way I'm doing this is there's a circular handle right on the back of the chair. Turning it one way will move the chair backwards. Turning it the other will move it forward. It's really easy to find. Uh, just a handle, circles around really easy. So readjust yourself. Let's make sure that your hips are pulled all the way back. Again, I'm taking two fingers right behind the back of the leg. Now I have space. That way he has the ability to go through the full extension and flexion when we do the test. Now that we have this set, I want to get him kind of strapped in. So you see we're going to have shoulder straps, we're going to have hip straps, we're going to have the strap for the leg, and then we're going to have one for the ankle. So the first thing we'll do is get his shoulder strapped in. So we're going to come across, arm on top, hold that for me there. There are a series of clasps where these, string, where these uh, straps go. These right here go to the back clasp right here. And we want to pull pretty snug, but we don't want to debilitate. So we'll get this here. Again, we're going to come across with this one. Clasp on this side here. And then the first thing I'm going to do is ask, does that feel uncomfortable to you? I know it's tight, but it shouldn't be hurting you or anything like that. Is that okay? Okay, so he feels okay. Next thing we're going to do is his waist strap. We we'll take this strap here by the side. We're going to pull it over his lap. And it's going to put, go into the clasp right here on the chair. Push that through. Same concept. We want it tight, but not debilitating. So again, does that feel okay? It's not hurting you? Okay, good. The reason we want the straps, the reason we use the straps, is because when he's doing the kicking test, all the way out, all the way in, we want to make sure that his leg is the only thing generating momentum. We do not want the rest of his body to be able to generate momentum, so we're making sure he's all strapped in. So at this point, before we go to the leg, we need to make sure we've set up the dynamometer. If we look on each of the handles, you can see in our system over here, there's a ton of different con uh, connectors we can use. For the knee, you're going to see these right here. One's going to have an R, the other one's going to have an L. It's going to correspond with the leg you're supposed to be using uh, which one of these you should use for which leg. Since we're testing Bo's right leg, we're going to be using this piece. And you can see if it's strapped in, his ankle will come right on this pad. Another good sign. We're going to make sure we're going to align this here. Make sure we get that locked on there good. On the side of this, there's going to be a black kind of almost screw looking thing. This is what's going to lock that leg piece into the dynamometer. So we make sure that this is aligned up. We're going to screw this in. And we're going to screw it in pretty tight. So that way, the last thing we want is this to come off during the test. We screw that in pretty tight. We look good to go. Now I'm going to ask Bo to take his leg and bring it on top of this piece. So that way I can finish moving him forward. I'm going to grab his hand here. I'm going to 
or move him forward. Just relax your leg. Make sure that chair locks in. What I'm looking to do is line his knee up with this black piece. It's going to be his axis of rotation. If you bring your leg all the way out and back, do you, does it rub on it at all? Okay. We want to make sure his leg is close, nice and lined up, but not rubbing against this, which could end up hurting him. Now we see his thigh strap. We want to make sure that this could go either way. We want to make sure it's going over the leg that's being tested. So we pull it over to the side here. We find the appropriate clasp where it's locking in. This one we're going to pull really tight again. A good rule of thumb, we're going to pull it as tight as they're comfortable with. Some people are going to vary a little bit. Um, this is okay for you. So he's not able to move his leg too much. And then we're going to do his ankle. We see our ankle strap right here. It just comes along the top of the foot. This can turn, which means that we can bring this bar up or down. What we're looking for is that the pad sits right on the back of the ankle. Depending on the subject height, this will have to be adjusted. His looks pretty good. So we'll just strap him in here. And I'm gonna pull tight and then lock it in. Does that feel okay? Okay, so now he's ready to go. He's all locked in. We're ready to refocus back on our computer. The first thing we need to do at this point is we need to set his range of motion. And we're going to click this button right here, which is going to allow us to do his range of motion. So we click here on what looks like the T. It's going to ask us, do we want to set range of motion limits? We hit yes. Then it's going to ask us to press the computer control button on the dynamometer front panel. We look right down here. We see computer control. All you got to do is push this. It will now light up green. It will automatically take us to the next screen. We want to make sure first that we're doing the right side. You see it defaults to the left. We're doing bows right. So we want to make sure we have the right side picked. And then we're going to hit this clear limits button. What that's going to do is free Bo's leg. Now he has the ability to move his leg in and out. So you have the ability to move it out just like that. So now he's free to move kind of freely with that range. So we need to set his away and his torn limits. So Bo, what I'm going to ask you to do in a minute, first thing we're going to grab this. This is our clicker. We're going to be using this periodically throughout this part of the test. I'm going to ask him to kick his leg out as far as he can. When he's there, I'm going to push this button to lock him in. So, Bo, I want you to kick your leg out as far as you can and hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Very good. By clicking this button, I've now locked him in. He doesn't have to hold that position. And then I can come to the computer and it will say away limit. I'll hit set. After I hit set, I'm going to click this button again. His leg is free. Bo, I want you to pull it as far toward you as you can. And I lock him in. Again, he can relax. It's not going to go anywhere. Now we're going to hit his toward limit. We're going to hit set. At this point, we can put this back for now, right on the Velcro strap. You'll see on the screen, we have this red kind of A and T with the red kind of block in between. That's going to show we properly set the limits. From here, we hit continue. Hitting continues going to free his leg up again. We have two more things we need to do. Number one, we need to set his natural 90. What that means is where his leg is when he's just naturally letting it hang in this position. So Bo, I want you to take a deep breath. Just let your leg hang naturally. And we're going to click again that T that we clicked to set his range. That's going to naturally default to his 90 degrees. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to weigh his leg. So we're going to grab our clicker here one more time. And I'm going to say, Bo, I want you to kick your leg out as far as you can for me and hold it again. And relax. At this point, I want him to take a deep breath in and then relax completely so we can weigh the leg. When he's done that, we're going to hit the scale right here that says limb weight. We're going to weigh it, and now we have his limb. The, way that, the reason why this is very important, and then when I hit this again, it will release him. The reason it's important to weigh the leg and why we have them do the deep breath is because if they're putting any kind of pressure on the, uh, on the pad, it'll increase the weight. If they have any kind of contraction of the leg, it'll cause it to weigh a little bit less. We want to get the, the actual weight of his leg because the machine itself will add that and will correct for that when we're doing the test. The, the, and it'll take that into account when we're calculating power, work, all these different variables. At this point, we have completely set everything up. We are ready to do the test. There's a little green button right here that says go. Before we click it, we always want to make sure we explain the test to our subject. 
So Bo, what we're gonna do today, we're gonna do a 50 repetition test. Uh, so when you, you'll hear on the screen, it'll, it'll give you kind of a buzz or a go. When you hear that, you're gonna be kicking your leg out as, in and out as fast as you can 50 times. We'll be giving you encouragement, we'll be kind of cheering you on. You just give us the best effort you can on every rep, okay? Before we start, after I hit this go button, I'm gonna have you do, because the go button itself will not start the test. The test starts when the subject stops moving the leg completely. So when I hit go, I'm gonna have him do a couple of practice reps. So what I'm gonna do is when I hit go, I'll tell you to give me one at 50, one at 75, and then one at full, just full range, just getting used to it, okay? After you've done those three, I want you to pull the leg all the way back and hold it. That's gonna be your starting position, okay? So I'm gonna hit the go button here. Bo, what I want you to do is start moving your leg to the range of motion. So that right there, and that'll give me about 50%. Good, give me 100%. Good, you feel that right there? And then whenever you're ready, I want you to pull the leg all the way back and hold it. That's gonna be our start, hold it. Go, 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 go. And we can see on the screen that the go came up. We're gonna cheer Bo on the whole way. Hard as you can, Bo, hard as you can, hard as you can. Keep going, push, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. We follow his progress right here on the screen. We do not want to tell him where he's at during the test. If we tell him where he's at, it can affect the final results. All we want to do is just encourage him. Just have, come on, Bo, keep going, keep going, push that leg. Harder, faster, keep going, come on, Bo, you got this. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Remember, we as technicians can see where he's at. He cannot. We don't want him to know where he's at throughout the test. Keep pushing, Bo, keep going, you're doing great. We're doing great, we're doing great. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going all the way through, all the way through, keep going, keep going. Keep going, last few reps, go, keep going. All the way through, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Keep going, keep going, we're getting close, we're getting close, finish strong, finish strong, all the way through. All the way through, all the way through, all the way through. And he made it, he made it, hit 100%, the computer says go. Immediately what we want to do is we want to get him unconnected from the machine. We get his ankle out, we undo his thigh, his hips, and his shoulders. It sucks when you're done with this particular test. We want to make sure they're free, they're kind of able to relax, they really feel okay. When you come out, I want you to be careful. This leg's going to feel a little weird, so go ahead and come on out, but make sure that you are uh, not jumping out too fast. Nice and easy. <laughs> and we have finished the test. The last things that we need to do, we come back to our computer. We'll see our little guy right here. He's cheering us on. He's all happy. He's all finished. All sets have been completed. Click yes to finish the test. Click no to repeat. Since Bo does not want to repeat, we will click yes. And the last thing we do is we go to the little blue thing that says report. We click report. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go to comprehensive evaluation. And then depending on what you need, you can either use the metric or the normal units. We'll use the metric since this is science. Make sure that comprehensive evaluation is checked. Just hit print, hit OK. That'll generate the report from the printer. The test is now done. All we have to do at this point is hit close. We can close out our software here and we are all done. So now we'll generate our report. And depending on what you're doing with the study, it will depend on whether or not you actually uh, are distributing this to your subjects or not. A few more seconds here to finish up. And what we can see on the report is it'll give us all his repetitions for both his the, e, the extension and the flexion portion of the test. It'll give us things such as peak torque, relative peak torque, total work, things like that. It'll also give us a nice graph where we can see kind of he had a nice fatigue. If you do a test and it was reversed, if it started low and ended high, something's gone wrong. Over time, we should see his torque start to decrease as he gets tired. At this point, we are done with the test. Uh, if you have any questions on how to use the Biodex Ice Kinetic Dynamometer, please ask either the graduate assistants, your professors, your teachers uh, before moving forward. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.